Well, that was an adventure. No idea why it wasn't behaving. Clicked the button like six times and it's just weird. Just weird, I tell you. Just weird. No clue as to why I was misbehaving. The system just did not want me to behave today. All right. So thanks for joining me. Uh, you see that we've changed our layout a little bit. You get to see what, song, what songs are playing now. Kind of cool, right? I'm going to give it a few moments so other people can catch up. I deeply apologize. For some reason, every time we clicked the Let's Go Live button, it just would not go. It wouldn't show the preview. It was so weird. Absolutely strange. But, you know, we're back. We're good. We're ready to rock. My husband is awesome. He's probably going to drop kick my computer out the window, but he is still awesome. Hi, Christine. So we are at the point where we're going to put the snap in, or at least the first of multiple snaps, from what I can tell. And I'm going to get my four snap pieces out, if I can find all four. One of these things is not like the other. There they are. All right. Excuse me. Still have a little bit of a cough. My apologies. We are on page 18 for those of you playing the home game. And we'll get started in just a sec. We had to resort to an entirely different streaming setup, so you'll hear me clicking the, the mouse a lot more often this time around. So if everybody wants to grab up the right pieces, if you're, if you're sewing along with me, you'll need the front that has the square zipper uh, overlay already done on it. You'll need one of your snaps your snap setting tools, which I'll go through and show you what I have and why I have what I have. Um, this is my hole punch. This is actually my snap, it, snap setting tool. This is actually a um, rivet, not rivet, eyelet, eyelet, not eyelets. What's the nifty version of the eyelets? Anyway, that's, a, that's, that, that's, that, that's what that is. You know, technical terms, right? I am expecting us to be able to get through and finish out the exterior front pocket. For that, we'll need the front pocket lining, which is what this one is, and then the front back pocket piece, which is piece D, from what I understand. I actually read the directions ahead of time, only like, you know, half an hour ago, but yeah, that's ahead of time, right? So if you have all your stuff ready to rock, let's do this. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm trying hard not to cough into the microphone. Doesn't always work. Okay, so we're gonna put a snap just above this square pocket. And if I bring my pattern piece over and I line up my beautiful square pocket that actually sits just basically where it belongs, there's this tiny little spot that says dome snap placement. So what I did was I took my seam ripper and I made a hole in the dome snap placement. And then I took my chalk and I crammed your chalk in there, but it didn't actually go all the way through the spot. So then I'd lined up everything again and I like poked the chalk in to make it make sure it behaves itself so that it actually would go onto my fabric and then I took the chalk and made it like a deeper, more obvious mark. Mark placement, right? 
All right, so it says, there are four pieces to the dome snap stool. And she has a neat little video uh, if you want to take a look at the online directions or the um, PDF directions, you'll be able to uh, go into her video. It's also listed on page 64 as the beautiful directions explain. We want the, the, the obvious boy side and the, the girl, <laughs> the girl, the, f the female section of the boy, the male, let's use the technical terms, right? Um, the male one, so she has beautiful picture on page 18 of which piece that is. It is not the one with, if you're using uh, silver, you'll be able to see a gold ring on the inside of the curved bits. So it's not that one. It's the one that has just the bump out. So it's not the one that, so these two pieces that don't look pretty are the two pieces that are actually the parts that snap together. If I can get them to behave themselves. So these two are the pieces that snap together. But we need these two, not these two at the moment. So, punch a hole at the snaps placement mark just above the finished hidden zipper. If your mark has disappeared, remark it. Okay, so my mark is right there. Um, so there's two different ways to do that. I have this really nifty hole punch that has multiple diameters of, uh, of holes that it can make and you just rotate it around until you find the right diameter that you want. You move your fabric into place right there and you literally punch down and it makes a hole. Unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to get all of this fabric into this tiny little spot. So unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to use this guy today. I am going to use the same punch that I used for our rivets the other day two days ago. So it's the same hole punch. Um, I think it's pretty much the same diameter too. Even if it wasn't, I'd still use it. Hey, it is, yay. Um, I'd still use it just because that's the only one I have at the moment. And of course I didn't grab my beautiful, what are we doing, Real Simple magazine? Yep. my real simple magazine from a place that I don't go to and that I don't live at anymore. So I'm going to check and make sure that the pocket lining is out of the way. So I'm only punching through this fabric. So I don't want to punch any through anything else. At least not yet. I take my scrap fabric and cover my guy right there. Grab up my hammer. And I'm right-handed. Everybody loud noises, ready? I mean, not painfully loud noises, but loud anyway. I mean, aside from the train outside. All right. Once you punched your hole and removed the excess pieces of Real Simple Magazine. So you can, bad idea. You can just take this snap piece, put it on the back and put the other snap piece in and punch it through. The reason I'm saying that's a bad idea at this point is because this isn't secure. It isn't stabilized. It isn't ready to be, uh, to, to have something that's heavy, snap in, snap out, snap in, snap out. If you've ever had any other bag, you know that these things get used. I mean, that's is the whole point. And the last thing I want to do is have a snap that pulls out because you can't easily fix that without opening lining pieces and things along those lines. So I'm going to actually put a little square of interfacing at the back, which is what her directions say. I think right next. Yep. Glue or fuse a piece, a scrap piece one by one onto the back. Now, the reason I put the hole there first was because so I would know exactly where I want to put my, um, my interfacing there. So remember how I said we're going to have a lot of mouse work today? That's because I cannot change scenes easily on my phone like I used to. So here's the other pieces that we will be using later today, but I'm going to iron onto that. And there's something under there. Oh, that's my other piece. Okay. So I'm going to get a little scrap piece from my scrap bucket. This is my scrap bucket. It has whales on the side for some reason that I do not remember why I got this, but you know, 
and I'm going to try and find some heavy piece of interfacing. Now it says use a scrap piece of Bondex or whatever. I just use whatever I have hanging out. And there it is. And this is the iron on stuff, but it's really, really heavy. So that's going to be there for a minute while I put other things away. There we go. And so then we'll repunch the hole through the, the same original hole that we did a second ago. Oops, that's my sewing machine and my butt. So, we'll flip it back over here. Leather isn't damaged from the heat, thankfully. And my hole is still right there. So I'm gonna repunch it through that interfacing piece. It's not painfully tough, so I don't have to like bury my hammer in it. Let me put everybody back. And there we go. Drew all the way through the interfacing. Everything's shiny. So I'll put the mail part on the back. Now, this is when I get personally a little paranoid. Every time I have a little thing like this, I get worried that it's going to come apart right there. That the fabric's going to fray out everything is going to go wrong right there at that spot that tiny little hole why have i frozen do i look like i've frozen my prep says i froze can you see me So this is when I get paranoid. And of course I can't get the pin out of my interface or out of my uh, fray check because I put a pin in my fray check to make sure that the fray check doesn't go all over the bottle lid. So I had to pull it out with my, my pliers. So there's the pin for my fray check and I'm gonna set that aside because it's gonna go back in there. And because I put a pin in it, my, uh, Spray check is a little bit ironed, uh, iron filled, so it's a little orange. So I am going to grab a tissue and just clean that off so I don't get any of that stuff on my fabric. Until it comes out clear. It's kind of a little bit of a balance. And so I put a little bit of fray check around the outside and just for good measure around both sides. Hi, Barbara. I am absolutely flattered about, uh, about you joining me to begin with and about you deciding to love the, uh, the recessed pocket. To be honest, it's not my style. It's not what I had ever done before. That was all the pattern. So, you know, thanks. But uh, to be fair, that was Sue's pattern. Sue's idea, Sue's fantastic amazingness. Okay, so I just snapped the um, male part of my snap into this hole. The hole is just a bit too small for the snap but that's okay because I pushed it through and it's uh, got fray check around it so it's not going to go anywhere 
And the nice thing is when I put the other piece of the snap on top, the, all of the fray check is hidden, so you can't see any of it at all. We're all good. Now, this guy is one of my favorites. So he's got a spot for, oh, well, you still get credit. Well, thank you. I, I will definitely take credit for, uh, for deciding to show and, and actually having mild amounts of tech skill. To be fair, part of that is my husband. But anyway, back to this beautiful toy. So this is one of the, the things that Joanne sells. If I can get my hammer out of the way. Uh, this is one as well. This one only does, um, not rivets. I do corsets with this thing. Um, not, oh yeah, rivets, not eyelets. There we go. So this one does my rivets. Uh, they probably, it probably does eyelets fine too. But this is what I do with rivets. If I have the hand strength for it, if it's something heavier, I have what I'm going to use for this guy, which you'll see in a minute. This guy's what the other piece that Joanne sells when you're doing snaps that are closer to the edge, which I usually use. This part will curve back. So how you put the snaps together is you put the male part up, okay? And then obviously the female part is waiting for the, that part. Well, the male part's gonna go up and it's gonna curve. I can't make my fingers do this. It's gonna curve out. So it's going to basically go up and then when you use this piece, it's gonna curve that metal out and around so that the male part will go out and around and hold on to the female part. It's really a neat idea. I'm really, really impressed with all of the physics and the mechanics that go into this. It's, it's beautiful. Unfortunately, like with the, the hole punch, I can't really get this all the way into here. So I'm gonna have to resort to more interesting methods. Unfortunately, I didn't pull them out ahead of time because I would forgotten that this was going to be a problem. So I have to go get all my dies from my corset making days. As soon as I find them. Yes, yes, grommets. Grommets! That's the word I was looking for earlier. Not eyelets, not rivets, grommets. Well, there's a free grommet running around the house now. Well, where's my previous dies? Ah, there you are. There's my die kit. Okay, so, hi kitty. So you can get a grommet kit that looks like this. Um, it's got grommets with it. It's got the die. Uh, it's got the I don't know, is there a technical term for that piece? Inserting die and hole cutter. Uh, inserting base, inserting die, and then there, there's a corresponding hole cutter. Now this one is a size zero. It's big. This is for, this is for grommets. This is not going to help me with my snaps because if I tried to put the inserting die part down onto here, it wouldn't even help. This one, however, is smaller and this is the one we're going to use so this is another um, uh, hole cutter just like this previous peep piece and it goes for this one so we are going to use this die with the snap not exactly how it's supposed to go but it's gonna be just fine because the whole point of this is for everything to curve and that's what this guy is going to do, hopefully. And if not, I'll just ruin one snap. No big deal. So this die, inserting die has a little uh, well around that hole. And what's going to happen is this inserting die is going to go into the inserting base, and they both have a curve on the outside of them so that they curve all the metal into each other. So the bottom of the male piece that is sticking through our fabric is going to go into here, and then yeah, it'll get close. It'll probably work. And then this will go onto there, and then we'll put our inserting die on top of it, and we'll hammer it all together, and we'll see what happens. I might have to take a pliers to this project when I'm done and pull them all apart, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to line everybody up. 
That is not the center. There's the center. Okay. So the male piece is on top of the inserting die and it would be really, really good if I put, oh, don't you dare tell me I dropped it. Of course I dropped it. Put the female part of the snap on top, maybe on top. There we go. And we'll see if this works. I'm kind of leaning towards no. This is a double O, that's why there's two. That's why there looks like there's an eight. So it gets, it's smaller than the O. We'll see. It might have just made the hole bigger. It might have curved the metal back. I'm not liking where this went. Because now the inserting die is stuck in the snap. <laughs> please don't hurt my really pretty purse. Pretty, please don't hurt my purse. <laughs> Adventures in purse making, right? Come on. Come on. Lego. Oh, I was sure it was going to work just fine. I really was. I was absolutely certain we'd be fine. All right. I know I had a pliers around here. There you are. So, advanced problem solving. What do you do when some of your tools won't let go of other pieces of your tools? You use more tools to see if it won't let go. Well, it let go. Huh. Didn't quite work. Um, so what this did, let me, let me explain what, where this went wrong. So this is not the right size for this snap. I could absolutely do it with this if I could get all of this in there, which is what I'm gonna try next. But what actually happened was I put the inserting die into here with the snap in between the two pieces. And what happened was all I did was make the hole for the male part. Instead of curving outwards, I just made it bigger. So not exactly my best moment, but that's okay. We're gonna, next gonna try and see if we can get all that fabric in there. I'm thinking not, but it's worth a shot, right? worth a shot. Might work, might work. I think I got it. By Jove, I think I've got it. Nope. Decidedly do not got it. Hmm. I'm kind of disappointed in myself now. Let's see. It looks like this base piece is a little bit malformed, but I can't quite tell. So I'm going to grab one that is new. Yeah, that's deformed. So we're going to throw that piece out and we're going to try again. Now I'm going to take a look and see if I deformed this piece, which is the top aspect to that one. Uh, yes, I did. All right, let's throw that out. Let's try this again. Oh no, that's not the way this goes. Wrong song. Okay, let's see if we can try this again. Stuff all that fabric in there. I was sure I wouldn't be able to get all this fabric in here, but maybe it works. And we get the male setting part in there. Ah, we are upside down. That explains my confusion. I'm like, why is this not working? That's supposed to be the male part. Okay. So I have it in the pincers and it's set right. Now we'll see if we can actually get it to curve and set correctly. 
Nope, not quite. Close. So I think now what my problem is, oh, maybe I did behave itself. First off, I'm very glad that this is mine. And if I ever make this for a client or a customer, I'm going to get a setting tool that works like this that is the right size. I think it's behaved itself. So it did start to curve the metal back, but I'm not sure it curved it all the way. So I'm going to cheat. And I'm going to take this setting die and I'm going to use it basically as a controlled hammer to make sure that that male bit flanged out and curled properly into the female aspect of the snap so that it won't come undone. I like that better. I can see more of the male part curving out when I did that. So that made me feel better about the security of that. All right, we have a snap done. We did all of what, two steps? And it's already seven. That's the way I roll today. All right, so I'm gonna get the majority of this at least off of my prep table. Glad to know it worked though eventually. And this goes with the setting die pieces and there's my pliers. Okay. We're ready to rock, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So sorry about that. Okay. So, my snap doesn't look exactly like her snap. That's what I'm looking at right now. So, set this piece aside while you do the exterior front pocket. This piece is going aside. It is now aside. Okay, exterior front pocket. Place right sides together of pocket lining and exterior front back pocket piece D. So I have a small thought concern problem this is just my pattern piece. Please let me get it out of the way. So here's my fabric. When I cut this fabric, I cut it this way from right to left. And all of my, all of this fabric that's patterned has a grain that goes up to up and down. So I think somehow I, pin, I, I cut this going the wrong direction, which should be very entertaining. And I will call it a design piece if anyone asks. So don't ask. And I'm gonna laugh at the first one of you that asks at the convention if I was supposed to look, if it's supposed to be that way. So put this like this. Right sides together. Sewing three eighths of an inch seam allowance along the long edge. All right, so let's stitch that together. I have my sewing machine all up and running. It's very, very happy to see me. Hasn't been with mommy for a while. Um, so I talked about how I like stitching. And I like stitching, okay, so my old days are in tailoring. And that's where I started sewing. Well, that and home ec, but that is. So I do a lot of old things together and let it go. So the, the directions say to clip, 
to put little clips in it the whole way and make sure you don't so put clips in this and pull the clips out as you stitch I didn't because I'm used to not doing that so my apologies I can get my fingers going there we go so I just stitched the 3 8 of an inch uh, seam allowance right across the top so it says clip in place sewing a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance along the long edge P fuse a piece of this just under the seam allowance to the wrong side of the exterior piece just below the stitch line so that would be the exterior piece not the lining there we go Chris doing good right I'm just moving a few things around on my ironing board and hey wouldn't you like to see my ironing board there's my ironing board had to move a few things out of the way so fuse this right there I love this stuff I love this stuff I can't pronounce the name of it. Barb's going to have to tell me in a couple weeks how to say it. She's going to laugh and it's going to be awesome, but I can't say the right. I want to call it Dev Coil and that's not right. So don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm sure it's something more sophisticated like the Koval, but we'll see. So use that there. And again, I will emphasize the importance of letting the things cool. Okay. Draw a five inch line down parallel to the top sewn edge. Place two pieces of quarter inch double sided tape along both edges. Okay. We're gonna do a five inch line from the top edge. Well, that's not hard. Pencil, ruler, more lead because apparently we can't draw on interfacing without breaking our lid, because that would be too easy. Connect the dots between those two lines, and there's my five inch line, as per instructed. Now, this is a time where I'm actually going to use some of my double-sided tape, except I don't have quarter inch double-sided tape. I only have half inch. Because, you know, far be it for me to have the required and requested items. <coughs> so I'm reading ahead a little bit to see if it's going to be a big deal if we use a iron-on. And it doesn't look like it. So I'm going to go back to my steam seam which is going to entertain a lot of you, I'm sure. Because we're going to back, back to the ironing board. Back to the drawing board. I'm just being silly, please ignore. All right, so put this stuff either side of the awesome interfacing. It's warm. It is very, very warm. Iron with caution. <laughs> I wonder why we're doing it above the seam. I mean, probably to hold the seam down because that would make sense, right? So that it looks pretty later. I just don't know why I can't stitch it. But, you know, that's what happens when you do the patterns blind. You sit there and you wonder about why are we doing it this way? When I could just read the silly directions, but that would be too hard, right? Far be it from me. Yay, ironing. Woo. One thing I do not enjoy is ironing. There's so many other things I'd like to be doing. But hey, that's my sewing machine. There we go, it's the title page. That's the prep table. See, I told you this would be more entertaining. Okay, 
So, hey, my, my preview is finally back up and running. Okay, so we've got double-sided tape, both sides of the decoval. Peel it off and full, peel off double-sided tape A. Looks like both, folding over sewn edge to the drawn line. So are we doing this? What are we doing? Oh, we are doing that. We're doing this. Hmm. Interesting. On the wrong side of the exterior pocket, now fold over the rest of the lining, matching up the bottom edges. See? Okay. I've become lost. So let's read it one piece at a time. Peel paper off the double-sided tape, A. Okay. Folding over sewn edge to the drawn line. We're gonna fold, we're gonna take the paper off. We're gonna, so when I get confused, which is not all that difficult sometimes, I do it one step at a time. They wrote these directions and, and it's been tested and so I'm going to do it one piece at a time. And if I don't understand, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reread it. And I got very lost because, probably because I haven't figured out what the point of the five inch line is and why we're doing all this fabric origami. Um, it doesn't make sense yet. And that's my fault, not anyone else's fault. And I'm pretty sure it will make sense when I actually read all the way down to wherever, <laughs> wherever the part makes sense. But this is how, this is how I learn. This is how I make things make sense to me. Okay, if I'm, I'm doing a pattern and I'm at to the point where I'm like, okay, wait, what? Okay, wait, what? And I've done the wait, what two or three times. Um, I do one tiny step and then I do one more step. It's, it's, it's like learning to ride a bike. You get on and you try. And if you fall down, you buy more fabric. Isn't that how that works? Pretty sure that's how that works. Come on. I'm peeling the paper off of my my double-sided tape, quote unquote, which we talked about last time, and we decided it's steamacine. So it's basically iron-on glue with a wax paper piece between it, and I can't get the wax paper off, which is the part that's annoying me right now, which is also the part that's slowing me down. Come on, come on, come on. Almost there, almost there, almost there. There we go. Okay, that wasn't so hard. Okay, we took it off. Folding over sewn edge to the drawn line on the wrong side of the exterior pocket, B. So I take the sewn edge to the five inch line. Sewn edge to the five inch line. And this is probably where things stick. Because, you know, this is normally double sided tape. And it sort of sticks. We'll iron it in a minute. Now fold over the rest of the lining, matching up the bottom edges. Oh, this comes over here. Close. Almost matches the bottom edge. I bet you that's my seam allowance, and I went too far. If I match the seam allowance with that spot, oh, that's much better, much closer. Okay, so now I can explain what in the world we're trying to do here. So I'm pretty sure this is our trolley pocket and our snap is gonna go there. Um, either that or it's just a back slips pocket, which is fine too, and that's awesome. The idea was that we wanted the, the exterior fabric to fold over the top edge a bit and then to have our lining fabric show up below that. I don't know why we couldn't top stitch that down before we attached everything, but okay, sure. All right, so I'm gonna glue this double-sided stuff in, in place. Let me double-sided tape down really quick.
uh, in future I probably wouldn't mess with the double sided tape thing I would just fold this back on the seam allowance top stitch it there and then measure up and fold it over there and you know toss the to Koval in there I mean to me the double sided tape aspect was a little bit more than I needed to go into but that's okay all right so finished product should measure 12 by 10 so I know the 12 is right hey it's just a little over 10 <laughs> the exterior piece is right so I'm gonna trim my lining a little bit The reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure that all my measurements are correct. And there's a lot of very precise measuring going on in this pattern. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, place a mark for the snap placement at an inch down from the folded edge and six inches in from the side. An inch down and six inches in. Thankfully, this takes chalk just fine. Six inches in is the exact center. And an inch down. Now I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure it means the right side, but I'm gonna still mark it over here. Just in case I need to mark it there later, or I need that mark later. There we go. All right, so I have an inch down and six inches. Oh, they're close. Setting exterior pocket snap female side. This is gonna be easier. Okay. Now, the nice thing is the decobal is on the inside, so I don't need to worry about that. With right side up of exterior pocket, punch a hole in the snap placement mark you just made, that guy. So that's six inches in, and that's six inches in, just out of curiosity. Uh, that's six inches in, and that is six inches in. Huh, okay. All right, we're gonna make a hole, and this is why everything didn't leave. It just kind of scooched over a little bit. Now I can show you these guys a little better. So I'm gonna use this to make my hole and I kind of need to know how big my hole it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the male part, which is the, the shiny snap part. This is the part that we're going to use now. I'm going to turn it on the side and I'm going to see how big the barrel of that hole is. I'm going to just put it up against the barrels of the hole that I have over here. Okay, the one that I have set uh, available right there is too big. Now you can only turn this in one direction, which is a safety feature. Okay, I know it's not the smallest one, so let's check the second smallest one. Mm, it's close. Check the third smallest. Yeah, that's perfect. So we're gonna use this guy. I'm gonna cough. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Okay, so the directions here are showing you how to use the dies, and I'm gonna use this guy. So I know where my hole is. This piece automatically, when, it, when you close the pliers part, this hole set maker is automatically going to go onto this uh, little gold uh, hole acceptor piece. Um, so I don't need to worry about putting down a magazine or anything like that. It's automatically gonna go in there. So I'm gonna gently place it together and then I'm gonna push really hard. And I kinda like turning a little bit to make sure that everything has been caught and this particular hole making ability is horrible. That was sad. That was very, very sad. So I'm gonna get my magazine and my whole other hole making tools. And I'm gonna make sure that this hole that I wanna make isn't too big. Nope, that should be perfect. That's the same size as the one that I was just trying to make. And we're gonna do it the real way, the old fashioned way. And every time I go over here, I have to go get my hammer because my hammer lays is hooked on my table right there. So I have to move my magazine, my uh, directions just a little bit. All right. 
a little more interesting. It's a little harder to do. And I certainly don't want to make too big a hole. Oh, this is my Joann's one. Just needs to be thrown in the trash. Sorry. I was trying to use a very a dull setting tool. This doesn't help. There it goes. And you can always feel that moment where it gives away because it'll be like tink, 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 tunk. It'd be very obvious. All right. So again, I'm going to put some seam, uh, some uh, fray check. And this time I'm going to be really careful with it because I don't want it to get bigger than the pieces that are going in. And the likelihood of that is actually really nil. But the last time I put fray check on, it was a lot more than I needed. And fray check is not something you need a lot of. Put that back together. Put male part in. Put female part in. Pliers. So this male part is the part that separates the male part of the snap and curves it over. So that should be going against the direction of your male part of your snap. forgotten how this one goes because it's not the male part isn't working so that isn't helping we'll see if that helped that does not look like it helped at all nope I just wanted to ruin a second set of snaps right that's more fun my snap setter is not behaving itself okay so, so there's that might be the I'm double checking to see if this behaves itself the way I believe it's supposed to, and it's not. That's just lovely. Just lovely. Yeah, none of that is making sense. It's been a really long time since I've done this. Can you tell? I don't set snaps all that often. So, I'm gonna fish out another set. And we'll double check and make sure we're using the right pieces. because then I've got to go grab the piece that we set aside. <coughs> Excuse me. I need the part that has the gold ring in it. There we go. sniffle a lot for crying out loud and I do not know where in the world all right let's try this again well that's not gonna work all right, I think we're gonna have to set this snap another day because this is not happening. I sharpen my hole punches by putting them into a cordless drill and sharpen on sandpaper following the bevel. Sharper than the moon. Well, thank you, Patty, for the nifty idea. Maybe I will salvage that sharpen, that hole punch. I just went out and bought a new one because I was frustrated. Apparently, I do not have the right tools to do this. 
Don't you love it when that happens to you? So we're going to move on because I can put this piece in at any given time. It does not matter. I am going to, and since I already pre checked it, I'm not worried about it coming apart. I'm going to take the marks off with my iron really quick. A couple quick swipes of my iron gets those chalk marks off. And we are just going to move on because I do not have the patience for this anymore right now. I'm sure all of you have been there and done that. All right, so put the snap in. Set the snap. With right sides up of exterior front piece, you set aside, lay the exterior finished product, clipping the bottom edge in place. Put these two together. Got it. Make friends. So, yeah, I did do them the opposite directions. So this one goes this way and that one goes that way. That's awesome. I bet you this is going to be my trolley pocket and it's going to be wrong. Oh, well, it's a design element. Meh. It's for me. It's to carry around my sewing stuff when I go out of, of my, my, you know, studio. It'll be okay. Man, Patty, I am saving that tip. Thank you very much for sharing. All right. Right side up of exterior front pieces. Lay exterior front finished product on top. Clipping the bottom edge in place. Now this one I'm actually going to do because I know me and if I'm not careful, this place is, this is going to move, especially since I have another, um, anchor point. So I'm going to put clips on the bottom here. And especially since I want all that to lay flat and smooth. despite it going the wrong direction. That's gonna kind of bother me. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Make sure this zipper pull is apparently open a little bit so I don't sew over it. Though how I'm gonna get all the way into here, I'm not quite sure. Okay, with right side up, of exterior front piece, put this on top of it. Base stitch the finished pocket to the exterior front on the three raw edge sides. Bink, bink, bink. Quarter of an inch from the edge, making sure the hidden pocket zipper's pull is partially open so you do not sew over it. If you're using a label or decorative feature on the upper front optional, then place this three inches down from the top edge, making sure it is centered. Set this piece aside. Well, why don't I put the little label on here first before I put the thingy on there? Or are you gonna put your label up there? I put my label there. Hold on. Hold that thought, please. I actually have a label. I haven't used any of them yet, but I have one. And I'm going to put it on this one. Now, I don't really like my labels. They were uh, bought off the internet cheaply. Very, very cheaply. They're ribbon. They say Altered Notions because that's my company name. They're not really impressive, but that's okay. They're still mine. All right, let's pop over the sewing machine, which is going to take me a sec. Sewing machine. There's my sewing machine. And I'm just going to go around this guy. Yeah, you know, actually, I should do this without getting the lining in the way. So it means I'm going to put it just a little bit lower than, and right side up, please. So it means I'm going to place it a little bit lower than I wanted to, unless I want to pull the ironing uh, apart, which I don't want to do. Hi, kitty. Hi, kitty. I'm actually going to fuse these two together because I do not trust my sewing machine to not move that around. So let's pop us over to the ironing board where other pieces are hanging out because it's really, really convenient. So I'm just going to take a little piece of iron on glue. 
rip it off, put it under my little tag. And because this is iron on glue and not the really nifty stuff that we're using for our seams, as soon as I iron it, it's going to stay there. There we go. Voila. All right. So I'm just going to go around it. I mean, you know, not particularly difficult. Suppose I could do a zigzag stitch and make it really pretty. I should probably test that, you know, before I go sewing on my really, really awesome stuff. Oh, find me a scrap. Front back straps. Scraps, scraps, please. There is scraps. Here is scraps of fabrics. It's not interfaced, but that's okay. Oh, uh, let's get me just a blanket stitch, would ya? Fairly thick thread. Let's take a look at what that looks like. A mm, little thicker. Let's bring those stitches together just a little bit. There it is. Uh, I have to be careful with this thread. This is a very thick thread. That's why I absolutely positively just did a st I, uh, practice stitching. I'm going to double check and make sure I'm not going to hit the uh, seam allowances up there. Nope, everything looks good. I'm going to cough again. <coughs> My apologies, everyone. And here we go. I'm lining up the center of my stitch. I'm not going to worry about trying to do really pretty corners. bury my needle and turn. And go. Bury my needle. Probably could have pulled these stitches together further. Bury my needle, turn, and go. threads to the back the same way we've been doing the entire time I'm probably going to make a note in the pattern that if I want to put a uh, a label on my bags that it needs to be done prior to this step here mostly because this is the wrong time to be putting a, a label on, in my opinion. Um, it should have been done before we put this, this as far together as it is. Like maybe before we fold it over the decobo. But then again, you wouldn't necessarily know where your placement of your, um, your piece should be at that point. So, I mean, I see why she put it this way. All right, tie my knot really quick because we've tied all our other knots, so we might as well stay consistent and make everything pretty and nice and not potentially coming apart. There we go. All right, let's go back and put this together. 
prep table, there it is. So I'm gonna put this piece back in so that it can give us a good idea of where that is. Clip everybody together because we're gonna go all the way around in a minute. All right, stay stitching. Normally I am a big clipping, no pinning person. I'm gonna steal a couple of pins just because this is gonna move. Oh, that's not a pin, that's a sewing needle. And since I don't want it to move there, I don't want it to move here either. I'm just going to put, put a couple stabilizing pins in. Now when I move this, everything else moves, so we're good. All right, stitch all the way around. Put this guy on there if I want to. I think they put theirs up here. I like mine there. And, you know, it's already there, so might as well move on. All right, we're going to go stitch around real quick, and then we'll be on page 22. I'm not going to bother to change my stitch length. I'm gonna go back to my straight stitch because I'm not an idiot and I didn't forget. I will back stitch at the top of this because I'm ultra paranoid about pockets coming apart. Bury your needle, turn your corner. Pull your clips as you come to them. your needle turn your corner and this is where I'm doing a bad I'm going up on one side when I went down on the other so there's a symmetry to everything and if you go down on one side of the pocket you should go down on the other side of the pocket because that'll force everything to not twist whereas you know when you're when you're sewing when you sew down and over and up again hi kitty yes mommy loves you um, when that happens, things start turning, especially if you don't have a walking foot, like that's what this piece back here is. That's my walking foot. Yes, you can come sit with mommy if you want. There you go. So when you don't have a walking foot like that, things will move faster on the bottom than they do on the top thread, on the fabric, because the bottom fabric is being pulled along by the feed dogs where the top fabric isn't being pulled really any at all, unless you have a walking foot like I do. Um, because of that, everything will torque when you're sewing, even with a walking foot, it'll still torque a little bit. It won't torque nearly as much as it will without one, but it'll still turn and torque around. Because of that feature, um, that's a good reason to start up here and stitch down and then start up here and stitch down and stitch across. And I did that with my straps and I always do that with my straps. I didn't do that with this, I usually do. And lucky me, I didn't get any of my, let's get back to the prep table here. There we go. I didn't get any of my pocket in that stitching. So lucky me. All right. So far, so good. So we are up at exterior back. So this is ready to rock. I'm gonna flip back a page and make sure that I didn't miss anything and it says to set this aside. Set the piece aside until piece, back piece A is complete and we are on back piece A. We are making really great progress today. I'm gonna to iron this just because I'm OCD about that. Let me get this piece out of the way. <clears throat> There we go, and we'll set the front piece out of the way. We're doing really good, guys. I might actually have this done in time. All right, back piece. This is where the trolley pocket is gonna go. And for some reason, I have a little bit of ironing to do. There we go. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry guys. All right. We already did this guy. 
and that's the, that's where my red zipper ended up my maroon red zipper that goes with the lining that's where that one ended up somehow Okay, so it says put this together. Awesome. We're on step 35. Once the exterior zippered pocket is complete, you will need to set the male side of the dome snap. Oh, yay. More snaps. So when we do this, we need to make sure that this, the pot, the lining for this pocket, because it goes all the way down to here, doesn't get in the way wherever that snap ends up. So be careful with that. And it says to set the exterior zippered. Set the male side of the dome snap, which it doesn't show me where the male side of the dome snap is supposed to be. And I can't really do that right now anyway, so I'm going to move on at the moment. Exterior back trolley pocket. Now, you don't have to do a back trolley pocket. You can do another back slip pocket, just like the one that we did on the other side. I am interested in doing the trolley pocket just because I've never done one before. I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be all that difficult, but I still cut it out to be doing the back trolley pocket and that's gonna be fun. So yes, I have trolley pocket pieces ready to go. But if you've chosen to do the regular one, go back to steps 19 to 21, which are the ones we just did, and do them again for this side which is probably where your dumb snap shows up. And I don't know if I have a snap for this. Uh, I usually use the magnetic snaps, not the ones that actually require, you know, physical pushing. Just the ones that require like little movings and then they go tick and everything's good. Those, those are easy to put in. Those just require a pliers. These guys, they require a bit more. And clearly I did not get the right pieces and parts while I was at Joanne's last time. All right, upper trolley pocket section. With right side up of exterior pocket piece D, and unfortunately, this piece goes this way. Draw two lines across the 12 inch side. Let me make sure I have the right 12 inch side. That's this one, two lines. One at that much, and the other at that much. So we're gonna draw two lines, one right here, and then, okay, and that much. There we go. All right, we have two lines. Woo, lines. You can't tell at all, right? Mark top and bottom. Top and bottom. So my arrows, in, in my brain, I always draw arrows. So this goes up and this goes up. So this tells me where ups and where the up direction is at all times. So this is my bottom, but it says, hey, that way is up, this way is up, this way is up, this is my top, this way is up. That's how my brain works. So that's why I don't have to write bottom and top. Now front and back, I had to write actually front and back. This used to have back on it, but I had to iron that area. So, cause you know, double-sided tape and all that. Okay, turn this piece over with right side up. Oh, they did all those marks on the other side. Look, another side. Why don't I make those marks on this side too, just for fun? Because we wanted to draw extra lines today. We just wanted to draw some, some spare lines. It's just, it's more fun that way. Mm, wrong lines. 
that line. Now it's not going to be confusing at all, right? Extra sets of lines. There. More lines. Woo. -hoo. Turn this piece over with the right side up. Place the pocket lining pieces. Pocket lining piece. Okay. Like pocket lining piece or pieces. Should there be more than one? I'm confused. Put this. Place the pocket lining piece on top of the exterior pocket piece at the top edge with right sides together. And so three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay. So we put right to right, up to up, so along there. All right, one step at a time, right everybody? Sometimes, sometimes, one step at a time. I'm not gonna clip because it's a straight seam. It's not hard in my mind. I am gonna start just like always. I'm gonna start a little bit in. I'm gonna back stitch and then I'm gonna stitch forward. I do that because I do not a ton, but enough work on leather and vinyl that I never want to put more stitches in it than I have to. So whenever I am going to back stitch, I'll only do two lines and not three. And my cat is being the silliest thing in the world. Yes. Yes. We are talking about you, small furry thing. Yes. Everyone can see you right now. Yeah. And you're going to scratch your ear. Good job. There's a good kitty. Mm-hmm. Mommy loves you too. All right, back to the prep table. Can you move, please? Thank you. All right, right sides together. Clip in place, so. Yay, page 23, everybody. Fuse, one of the pieces. Ah, I didn't cut my other piece of decoble. Just below the stitch line on the wrong side of the exterior piece. This sounds familiar, doesn't it? Oh, we've got two, one there. And the top and the other piece just above the line drawn here at the bottom. So we're going to put one right there and one right here. Aha. All right. So that means I got to pull this down again. And those pieces are 12 inch wide. I feel like my space is very cluttered and it's bothering me like nothing is where it belongs still need that this can get out of the way and so can this all of these things that can be put out or put away my mom always did the uh clean what clean while you cook concept and it is very ingrained so i tend to put things away as i work and so having everything out and about, like out here is driving me crazy. All right, it's a little better. I'm gonna need a little space to actually be flat. All right. Twelve inches by that much. And right there. There we go. That's one. And whoever was worried about us not having scissors and stuff like that at the retreat, really don't. There's, I have like five pairs hanging around me right now. And I'm sure to bring at least three of those.
because all of you wanted to see me have to cut out stuff, right? That's what you tuned in for. Good job. Yay me. Woo. Yes, love? Pretty well, I think. He's asking how he's going. Yes, love? Well, it kind of looked like it crashed there for a minute because I wasn't getting anything on the uh, Facebook feed, but I was still getting stuff on the uh, streaming feed. But I asked one of the other ladies who's watching us, you know, the wife of the, la the guy that you really like? Yeah. I asked her if I was still online. She's like, yeah, you're fine. I'm like, cool. And I've had some people talk to me since that freezing moment, and everything seems all right. So I think we're okay. At least right now. Cool. Yeah. Now get out of my studio. Love you, honey. <laughs> he just said, yep. That's my husband, sweetest man in the world. At least for me. All right, now that we have our, our workspace a little more less cluttered, more or less, a little more less cluttered. <laughs> oh, words, words are pretty. We're gonna get you out of the way because you're not being helpful at all. We're working on this. Okay, here's one of the pieces just below the stitch line on the wrong side of the exterior piece at the top. Okay, so is that the exterior piece of this? I'm pretty sure it would have said lining. Pretty sure this is supposed to be here. And the other just above this line. So this one's gonna go there onto the ironing board. which seems to have moved somehow. Whenever I have the uh, option to uh, include stitching under things that get glued down, I always do. And I don't mean stitching, I mean like tails of stitches. So like the ends of the stitching, I always try and glue those down because that makes so, such more, such more so much more of a stable uh, project. So the, the backstitched piece right here, actually the tail goes under the interfacing there, and so does this one. I do have to admit, I like this idea of putting the uh, decoval and I'm really sorry, Barb, if I'm saying it wrong. Um, right next to where a, a, a hidden pocket seam comes up. So like this is going to, I'm sure, be folded over and this is going to be folded over and it's going to look a lot like the pocket we just finished on both sides. At least that's what I suspect is going to happen. And um, I very much like that, that this is what gives that, that spot it's gravitas, for lack of a better phrasing. It's, it's heaviness so that you don't have the top stitching there. Now, obviously, I'm used to top stitching. Top stitching is what I'm used to. So when you fold things over and you put this down, I'm used to just running a line of stitching right there. She's right. With, with this, the way it's set up, you don't need it because there'll be the double-sided tape, and there'll also be this beautiful heavy piece of, of interfacing right there holding everything up. It's really kind of a neat idea. Not one I'd thought of yet. At least, you know, that's my sewing. There's my prep table. Okay. Put those pieces there. Place double-sided tape just below this at the bottom and just above this line. Or 
there's a place double sided tape just below the decoval at the bottom. No, just below the decoval at the top. So just right right there. And just above the this line right here. And then we'll fold the sewn inch line. Oh yeah, we did this already. Yeah, we're gonna do the thing again. We're gonna do the thing again. This is exactly what we did with the last one. And that's still my sewing machine camera. There we go. It's been a day, can you tell? Work was just a little hectic. So just below here, I got a message. I think that's where the first one goes. And I'm just gonna measure out another piece of the steam of steam, which is what I'm using for my double-sided tape because A, it's inexpensive, and B, it works. And in all honesty, I could probably just use my regular uh, iron on glue and I have plenty of that too okay so just below this at the top so the first piece goes right here and I'm just butting it up against that <coughs> and second piece above the drawn line right here. Peel off the paper. After it cools. Peel off double sided tape, folding the sewn edge to the 5 8 inch line. And I have the sniffles now. I'm trying not to blow my nose. And I'm pulling my tape off early. I should stop. Let's see what the next thing is. Iron the lining piece over exactly half an inch on the unsewn bottom edge. Okay. So when they say things like this, so they want it uh, um, folded up and ironed down half an inch exactly. So I'm like, okay, well, I don't have a two-dimensional ruler. All of my rulers are fairly thick. So what I do is I measure, I take my transparent ruler here, excuse me, and I measure up a full inch and then I take my fabric and I'll fold it up to that full inch, which will mean it's folded it over by half an inch. So we'll do all that at the ironing board while we are waiting for our double sided tape to cool. Hot, very, very hot. Please be careful, very hot. And now it's folded up half an inch. Come on now. Peel nice for the, the audience. Well, that's better. Wiggle me. Come on now. Let's go here. There we go. Getting a little better. Is 
There's a tiny little piece left. It's like an inch. There we go. And here we go with the second part. And this one's gonna come off almost all the way, yay! And then it's gonna come off nothing. Almost, 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 there we go. We'll get rid of all our wax paper. And now it's gonna tell us, let me reread these directions. Holding the sewn edge to the line down here. So I'm going to take this sewn edge and I'm going to take it down to the sewn edge down to there. Now I'm going to temporarily push it all down because I don't want to iron it down until I know it's in the right place. <laughs> and it's in the right place. The reason I know that is I just folded my lining over and it lines right up with the edge of this interfacing. So this is beautiful. So it's a little offset. So I'm going to go sewn edge to line. I'm going to curve it a little bit. There we go. Beautiful. And I bet you that's going to do that in just a second. And it's hot. How many times have I warned people, let things cool? I know better. Let's see what the next set of directions say. Iron the lining piece over half an inch. On the wrong side of the exterior piece, draw a line across the decoval. This. Now I have a line. My phone wants to be fed and it gets plugged in up here. So plug that baby in over there. There we go. Okay. Now I have a line. Place a double-sided tape below the drawn line as well as below the decal hole. Peel paper off double-sided tape, fold lower edge. Okay. So, they say, put double-sided tape Sorry. Place double-sided tape below the drawn line as well as below the interfacing. Fold lower edge of exterior piece up to the drawn line. So that's going to go up there. Place another piece of double sided tape on top of the folded over raw edge. Secure the end. Oh, we are so complicated here. So the reason I'm trying to read ahead a little bit is because I want to use some of this uh, iron on interfacing or iron on glue. So place double sided tape below the drawn line here as well as below the interfacing. Peel paper off, fold lower edge of exterior piece up to the drawn line. So basically, fold this up to there. Now there's no need to have both pieces of in an iron on glue there then. That's just extra. So we'll do this. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, folks. Okay. Place another piece of the double-sided tape on top of the folded over raw edge, just above the fold. 
as shown in B. So, just above the fold, along the raw edge. I think that will go right there. No, nope, it goes a little further down. So I'm going to make it, it'll saddle both the inner, the interfacing and the fabric because mine's too thick. Or I'll cut it down in a minute. Secure the end of the 12 inch zipper. Let me go find my 12 inch zipper. Pretty sure I know which one it is, but it is a very, very long definition of a 12 inch zipper. Well, not really. It's actually right. There's my 12 inch zipper. It's even labeled, ow, 12 inch zip. Okay, secure the ends. Add a bead of glue along the wrong side. Oh, now we've just gotten confusing. Let's flip over to our prep table because that's where I'm reading all of this. And I think what I might end up doing is having to put some actual double-sided tape along this line, but we'll see what we can do because this is apparently, this is apparently a zipper. There's apparently a pocket to this trolley pocket interesting but it only goes that far because that's all glued down hmm. or maybe but there's no lining and okay we'll find out we will find out in a minute i don't know why we haven't closed this off but it's still talking about a zipper part i haven't done a trolley pocket before so we will find out one step at a time place double-sided tape below the drawn line okay that's this this double-sided tape goes there And they have this sitting like this on their pictures. So let's orientate ourselves accordingly and like that. Okay, secure the end of the 12 inch zipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine's secure, it has this little metal thingy. Peel paper off double-sided tape, flipping over the zipper wrong side down yeah i'm gonna have to use something other than this i'm gonna have to use the stitch stuff where is it Bel place double-sided tape below the drawn line as well as below the decoval okay so that's going to be right on the edge of right there okay All right, I'm gonna go iron that on real quick. Put that away. Okay. Try and help it cool. Secure the end of the zipper, peel paper off of double-sided tape with right side down. Put secure with tape and then add glue. This is a very adhesive intense bag. <laughs> I'm a fan of not making, letting things move, but this is a very adhesive intense bag. Oh, thank you, Karen. I apologize if you've been, had, had said that I'm glad I'm, you're glad I'm feeling better a while ago. I am feeling better, but I still have a little bit of cough and I still have a little bit of runny nose and it's driving me insane. I'm perfectly functional. I'm no longer contagious. I'm back at work. I'm obviously back having fun here, but it's driving. It's just the little things. 
I get tired e more easily, which drives me crazy because I love being busy like everybody else, I'm sure. And the sniffles are driving me nuts. I'm not I'm about to blow my nose right now because it's bad enough you guys have to cure me coughs and sniffles. <laughs> but hey, life's fun, right? That's what this is. Come on, adhesive. Let go of the wax paper just a little bit more. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I only have a little left. You guys came off so nice on all the other ones. Guys, I only got an hour to get the rest of this off. Let's go here. <laughs> I swear this came off in like 40 different tiny little pieces. There we go. Okay. We will deal with the tiny little pieces of adhesive later. So take zipper. Flipping over zipper right side down, securing the long tape edge on the double sided tape. nice thing is it's just a little bit sticky and then I can iron it for crying out loud you silly machine I mean not that my machine is bad it's my my uh, computer that was misbehaving this afternoon like we had everything set up we did a test then I went to sit down for a little while like for half an hour we come back to my, my computer and my computer has completely freaked out. It doesn't want to connect to the internet. That's why our, our stream was a little bit delayed. My computer didn't want to connect to the internet. It didn't want to connect to Facebook and the stream and the keys weren't right. And it was driving both my husband and I crazy because it had worked like half an hour before. And we were just sitting there going, this is insane. This is silly. There's no reason this shouldn't work. So. I push the button to test it in, in our streaming software one more time and then it connects. I'm like, okay, fine. You'll finally connect. Great. Thanks a lot, you stupid machine. Okay. Add a bead of glue along the wrong side of the zipper tape edge, which would be the top one. As soon as it's cool. And I have to find my glue again because I put it away. Silly me. I think I've been using this one. Yeah, it's the one that's been used. Okay, so we're gonna glue this edge down. I wanna take a look at that picture again. I wanna make sure that I'm gluing the, uh, yep, right along the zipper tape. Right along that zipper tape. I told you I had the sniffles. And a little more glue right there. There we go. All right, bead of glue along zipper tape. Fold down the lining portion. That would be this one. Placing the ironed edge on top of the glued area. Salvage edge should be folded under. Hmm. Okay. So what's puzzling me is that I have a bubble of lining and I don't like that and I don't know anyone who would like that. But I'm going to continue to follow the directions and if I have to rip this up then I will rip that up and if I have to restitch something down then I will restitch something down and life will go on. But I have this little bubble of where I think I might need to move something down. But anyway, glue that down. 
Let the glued bra bond for approximately five minutes to prevent movement when stitching. Stitch through all layers close to the folded lining edge. So stitch all layers right there. We're gonna have stitching on the front now? Wasn't the whole point of this to not have stitching on the front? Oh, beautiful directions, I am very confused. The glue bond, okay, we're bonding. Stitch through all layers close to the folded lining edge, securing lining, zipper, and exterior together. I guess we are. Wait, my stuff doesn't look like that. I don't have that pretty folded part. Okay. Yeah, my zipper's there. My thing down. And the glue is right on that edge. Yeah. Fold down the lining portion, placing the ironed edge on top of the glued area. Salvage edge should be folded under A. Oh. Okay. Sort of. And then stitch down. Yeah, I guess. This completes the upper trolley pocket section. This piece should... How could that complete the upper trolley pocket section when I still have a, a, a open zipper tape side? Oh, okay, so I have more pieces. Okay, yes, and this piece is incorrectly placed where it says pull the stitching up to that line, the second line we drew, pretty sure it meant pull the selvage up to that line. Because then it will probably be straight and flat and pretty. I'm going to zip this up again, hold that in place. And test this, this theory out on this side. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the salvage on this 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 like little section over here. I'm pulling the, the iron on glue apart. And I'm going to move the salvage line down to that line that we drew. It's certainly closer. It's not it's not right though. I have way too much lining fabric on that spot, which is just weird. So I'm going to leave all of this open because what should be, I mean, if we, if we flatten everything out as if, you know, everything was flat and straight and beautiful, um, this line, doesn't come anywhere close to that five and a change line that I haven't been mentioning. Um, it does come close, really nice close to the edge of the decoble, but not quite. There's maybe a quarter of an inch at the bottom that it isn't right there either. So I'm really confused about putting this one together and the, the draw this line and pull this to here and move this to here and then, you know, do the hokey pokey turn yourself around part of putting this whole circle of fabric together. And why in the world would we stitch along there and have it show out here? That I, I'm, I have an appropriate level of confusion at this point, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to make sense later. Because I very well could have put something in the wrong place. I didn't make the right measurements. I'm gonna keep moving. Um, in just a few moments, I'm gonna stitch along this line right here. And then we're gonna see what we can do about the rest of the trolley pocket. All right, let's move over to the sewing machine, make that stitching and find out what happens. Ugh, it's been a long day. Okay, so, so far you guys have seen me use my regular sewing machine foot a lot. Mostly because we've been working with a zipper Whenever we've been, excuse me, working with a zipper, it's been next to um, vinyl or leather. 
Whereas this case, we are, we don't have that extra uh, height sitting next to this zipper tape. So I just was going over both of these pieces with my regular zipper foot because the height of the vinyl and leather right next to the zipper tape made the heights, the two heights very, very similar. Whereas now we're going over upholstery fabric, interfacing and lining fabric. I don't really have that opportunity anymore to go to use this very thick uh, sewing machine foot. I'm gonna use my zipper foot now I'm going to use my zipper foot with the walking foot attachment because I'm always going to use the walking foot attachment whenever possible. And if I tried to start stitching right now, I would break my needle. So I'm going to move it over a bit. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit to see about stitching placement. Placement. If I can get my words out, that'd be great. I like where that sits. I've started a little bit in because I always do. And I'm going to back up a few stitches. And because it's misbehaving, it's not going to want to pull forward. There we go. I'm a stitching. I'm a stitching. I'm stitching as close to the edge of the lining as I'm comfortable with. And then I'm going to back stitch and pull this out. <clears throat> because I've back stitched, I'm just going to snip my threads because there's no reason to keep. Uh, to knot my threads at this point because I did all the back stitching. So why worry? Be happy now. But don't worry. All right. So now I have, thank you. Now I have my stitching in place. And I have a couple of questions, but we'll see. I bet you those are going to get answered fairly soon. If we can get over to the prep table, please thank you. All right. So like I was showing before, I actually, so this is nice, flat, straight. It's kind of glued down. All the layers are together. I do have a raw edge of zipper tape right here. And I do have a bubble of uh, fabric, of lining fabric right there. And I kind of have a bubble of the um, upholstery fabric, the exterior fabric right there too, because I took, I pulled all of the um, gluing out because I wasn't sure vertically where everything was supposed to be. If my lining piece was too long and I just needed to tuck that in and stitch it down, if I had put, you know, drew my lines in the wrong places, these are all things that I'm not quite sure of. So I'm going to kind of wait, I'm going to play the wait and see game. Um, this is to open for my trolley pocket for when we um, slide this, uh, slide this over the, the um, luggage bag. And I'm pretty sure this opens so you can use the trolley pocket and this remains open, but I'm not sure yet. And we will see. So we are, I believe, on step 43 on page 25. And I still have the sniffles. Okay, with right sides down of upper trolley pocket, place lower trolley pocket exterior piece E right side up. Let's find piece E really quick because that would be handy. This is B. There's E, lower trolley pocket. One exterior, one lining, one interfacing. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, great. And the, the lower trolley pocket piece goes against the grain. <laughs> oh, the importance of cutting your pattern pieces out the right direction. So I was all concerned when I was cutting everything out about this being the right way up and you know this th this piece the part going up and and making sure that this directional fabric was perfect and then I go and mess up this directional fabric. I love it. It just it's, my OCD is just screaming at me right now. Just for, you know, a moment of entertainment. Okay. Right side down of upper trolley pocket. Excuse me. I'm going to assume that this is right side down. Now, all of those pictures have all of this kind of rolled a bit. So that's another question of, was this supposed to be rolled up somewhere? 
Well, it's where it is now. With the right sides down of upper trolley pocket, place the lower trolley pocket exterior piece with the center mark at the top. So the directions told you to mark a whole bunch of these fabrics and do this and do that and do the hokey pokey. Um, I have a tendency of flying by the seat of my pants, which is not always a good thing, especially in very, very com complicated and detail oriented things like this pattern. But I just marked the right side, uh, the, the center piece. So, you know, I'll just put that there. That looks right ish. We'll see. Right side down, upper trolley pocket piece, place lower trolley pocket exterior piece, right side up with a center mark as done in the prep area at the top. Place a piece of double sided tape along the right side of the opposite edge. So, okay, we have this and our zipper tape is open. This is where I'm looking at the pictures. And we have double sided tape along here. That's what I'm gonna glue or iron on double sided tape right there really quick. If you weren't with me on Monday, the reason I'm using this stuff, which is we've discovered stitch witchery, no, seam a seam, ha, um, is because I don't have quarter inch double sided tape, so I am making the best out of a moment. All right, I'm gonna go iron that on real quick. Okay, while we let that cool, peel paper off double-sided tab, attaching to the right side of the exposed zipper tape. So that's gonna go there, okay. Here we go again. Come on, be good. You were kind of good. I'll take behaving a little bit, right? Come on. <coughs> I'm so sorry, folks. I tried to give you warning when I'm gonna cough. I really hope it's not bad. Don't blow out your headphones or your speakers. Certainly it blows out my headphones, right? Come on now. Almost, 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 almost. Yes, I will take this. There's tiny little bits of piece of pieces, but I don't care. Okay, so they want me to glue the right side of this to that, which makes sense. But what I'm worried about is having everything line up. So I'm actually going to make sure that these line up like that. So what I'm worried about is not having is if starting to attach the zipper tape to this piece of fabric and having them offset. So I've re-zippered the zipper tape. I've matched up these two raw edges and now I'm going to put them together. I'm not going to put them together while the zipper's open. Not to start anyway. Now I'm gonna do it because it's getting in my way.
There we go. All right, I'm going to go iron this before I lose the placement. Like I said, there's a lot of gluing and, and pasting and placement things that are going on with this pattern. And so far with the trolley pocket, I don't quite understand, but I'm pretty sure I will before I'm done. And you know, that's the thing. If you don't get it, at least do a test pattern all the way through the way that the person who wrote the pattern said to do it. And if it still doesn't make sense after that, do it a different way after that. But at least you try doing it the way that it was intended, especially when you don't understand something. Right now I'm trying to let this dry a little bit and get something out of my eye because, you know, it's the way the world rolls sometimes. Okay. Peel paper off, attach the right side of the exposed zipper tape. Zipper will look like picture C. Clip the lower poly track at lower trolley. I don't even get to talk today. Clip the lower trolley pocket lining piece E to the right side of the exterior piece should be facing inwards. A. Okay. So sandwich the two between each other. And I'm definitely using clips here. So when I interfaced things, I interfaced the, uh, so this piece, this piece only comes with one piece of interfacing, this particular pattern piece. And when I interfaced it, I interfaced the uh, upholstery fabric. I did not interface the lining fabric. So I'm very curious to see how well this lining fabric piece right here is gonna be able to behave. Or maybe it'll be perfectly fine. Stop switch through exterior. Okay. Stitch right sides together using a quarter of inch seam allowance the full length of the tape. Okay, so that means. this comes all the way so what I'm doing is I'm kind of opening up the uh, lining and making sure it comes all the way in all the way down and now I'm gonna stitch all the way down probably a little bit bigger than a quarter of an inch seam allowance because my tape is quarter of an inch seam, uh, wide um, but when I say I'm going to stitch more than a quarter of an inch, I don't mean by a lot. Okay, so now we come to the quintessential problem of if I feed this in at zero, how much do I need to move it over to make it a quarter of an inch? That's not a quarter. Or if I put it on a quarter of an inch, then we can stitch at zero. But I have a zipper foot in. I hate math. I'm going to stitch there. And back up. So my problem here is that my sewing machine is pulling the bottom piece faster than it's pulling the top feet piece. Now, walking feet are supposed to alleviate a lot of that. I can just tell you right now it's not working. Because I have a good amount of fabric that's going to be on the wrong side of the zipper. It's not the end of the world. It will be fine. It's just annoying. 
expect more out of my sewing machine than this. I mean, it's a good half an inch excess fabric. And bury your needle before you lift your pressure foot because now you're going to move your zipper pull because your zipper pull is going to get in the way. But I got to find the stupid beginning of my zipper pull, which is under like six different layers of fabric going different directions. And it's misbehaving. And I want to cough again. I think I got it. Far enough down the line that I can stitch now. There we go. Excuse me, I'm so sorry, folks. Okay, so I'm gonna show you why I really don't like that I did that without having this piece interface. So there's my prep table. Okay, so what I was doing is I was stitching this zipper to this exterior to this lining. This lining has no interfacing on it and it was on the top of my sewing machine. That's my first mistake. I should have made sure that this lining was along the pressure feet so that, or along, yeah, along the bottom uh, where the feed dogs would pull it forward at an even rate. Reason being, if I had kept the uh, interfaced piece of exterior on the top, it would have been pulled forward fairly well by the walking foot feed dog piece, which is that little piece that moves forward that's kind of behind my pressure foot. So see how these two start at basically the same spot. Wait until I show you this. See that? That's how much difference the top piece was pulled than the, from the bottom piece. That's how much difference that can make. This bottom piece was pulled at an even amount because it was along the feed dogs along the bottom. This top piece wasn't. It also wasn't interfaced. So this top piece of fabric stretched because it's cotton, it's gonna do that. So because of the way I was sewing, this top piece stretched. That's a bad on me. Nothing really I can do about it at this point and I'm just going to move forward, but learn from my mistakes. All right, let's see what we got next. My table's moving a little, sorry. All right. Stop. Um, place the piece of double side tape along the wrong side of the exterior. Okay, let's feel. Teeth should be facing inwards. Okay, perfect. So place a piece of double sided tape along the wrong side of more tape along the wrong side of the exterior piece. So along here, right at the selvage edge above the stitch line. Oh, okay, above the stitch line. Peel paper off double-sided tape, folding wrong sides together, giving a crisp edge. Stop stitch through exterior piece only and not the lining. So where exactly are we st top stitching? So you want a top stitch like that. Okay, well, why do I need tape for that? Okay, let me show you what we're gonna do. I'm gonna zip this up. Okay, so what the directions are saying is put a piece of tape here, fold it over, and then you're going to stitch right along here only. So you're grabbing the seam allowance and you're stitching right along there. And that's some of the tape, double-sided tape uh, paper. That's just great. Okay. Maybe I'll 
do that with a zipper open. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so the idea is that we don't wanna grab the zipper tape. We don't wanna grab the lining, <clears throat> but we do want to get all the layers of uh, seam allowance. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to pull these two pieces, these two aspects, the zipper and the lining, this direction. I'm going to push the seam allowance that way and I'm going to fold over the uh, uh, exterior fabric and we're gonna stitch right along this line and we're not gonna need any tape. But that's only because I'm gonna manhandle the high heaven out of it. We could put tape on there and yes, it would be easier, but easier isn't always better. So we're gonna stitch right along that line. Hello, love. I'm going to put my stitch length, I'm gonna leave my stitch length at three. Okay. Kitty only just got it back in here. And we're gonna center that stitching. I'm gonna put my regular foot on and my walking foot on. I'm gonna start a little bit in. So I'm making sure my seam allowance and my exterior go this way, my zipper and my lining go that way. I'm gonna manhandle the first little bit of it. I'm gonna back it up, make it go forward. And I'm gonna stitch right along that edge. So I'm pulling the two apart and I'm making sure the seam allowance goes toward the exterior. And I'm letting the sewing machine just pull this whole thing forward. <laughs> Setting it up so it's folded, got the seam allowances going the right way, letting the machine pull it forward, setting up a piece again, setting up a different, another part of it. And when you get closer to the end, it's automatically going to flip all the right pieces to where they belong. Because that's the way the, the rest of the fabric has been laying the whole time. And bury your needle to move your zipper pull. Because if you don't move it, you're not, not going to be able to zip, stitch all the way down. <laughs> So I pull the two pieces of the zipper tape together. I hold one end in one hand and the tab to the zipper pull in the other and I pull them in opposite directions and that doesn't always work. Sometimes the zipper wants to eat the fabric. Not everyone plays nice with each other. And back stitch at the end. Clip your threads. There. No glue needed. At least for that part. Hi, kitty. It's a good kitty. No one can see you there, though. Prep table. There we go. All right. So now we basically have a hidden zipper. Except it's really obvious because this fabric goes this way and that fabric goes that way. But there's a hidden zipper right there. And no pocket, but a hidden zipper nonetheless. We'll see. Stops us to the exterior piece only and not the lining. Fold wrong sides together of lining piece and exterior piece to meet at the bottom edge. Kitty is doing a good thing. Let me read that again. Fold wrong sides together of lining piece and exterior piece to meet at the bottom edge. Secure the open end of the zipper with a basting stitch. Oh, so <laughs> flatten that. That makes more sense now. And secure the open end of the zipper with a basting stitch. I think it just means 
there. I'm gonna iron this open in just a sec. Okay. Man, I think everything moved. All right. Okay, I'm gonna make an executive decision and decide that I measured something somewhere wrong. I am going to flatten this out. And iron it all down like this. I did something somewhere wonky. And that's okay. And you know, it's really weird because I ironed that I, I did something weird wrong and that's fine. I don't mind. But the thing that's really weird is she doesn't suggest to like stay stitch these side seams so that they, they all stay open or stay pretty or anything like that. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a reason. But I've decided that somewhere along the lines I measured something wrong. Maybe I measured this lining piece the wrong dimensions and it would work if I grabbed the right lining piece and I grabbed the wrong one. It's completely possible. Wow, look at that, it almost is perfect. And that was not planned, I promise. That is complete paper, uh, fussy cutting error. That's a complete accident, but it's beautiful. I didn't even try, look at that, I'm so proud of it. Okay, I'll stop trying to be proud. Okay, let's get back to the prep table. With right sides up of the trolley pocket, measure 10 inches from the top fold of the pocket of the bottom. With right sides up of the trolley pocket, measure 10 inches from the top fold of the pocket to the bottom. Huh? There isn't 10 inches there. There's barely 10 inches there. A what now? There is clearly a miscommunication about my trolley pocket here. Is this side to side? Doesn't look side to side. Oh, at the top. Okay, okay. So it's supposed to be 10 inches and, met and remove excess at the top. Okay, that makes more sense now. Thank you for the picture. Because I have my picture upside down compared to you. Well, I feel less confused now. That would be part of the reason we didn't worry too much about uh, stay stitching and all that jazz. And why when I just decided to glue it down, it's fine, perfectly fine. Trim off excess. We have no more excess. We are excessless. <laughs> Draw a line, trim off excess, top stitch at on the right side, right side, add a quarter an inch and two inches down from the folded edge. Why? Top stitch on the right side, add a quarter of an inch and two inches down. That's gonna be in the middle of the zipper in mine. from the folded edge, two inches down from the folded edge. Why? Oh. The zipper's for the bottom part and the snap is for the top. <laughs> okay, that makes more sense. That's why I'm always looking at things upside down from them. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so my problem, let me explain. Oh, Karen, I will, 
As soon as I can pull the, the um, video down from the Facebook group, I will definitely upload it to my YouTube channel. And thanks, and have a great night. Probably missed you already, but have a great night anyway. Okay, so, my problem here. So, I was working with this being the top. I assumed that, you know, the zipper would go at the top, and this would be attaching to something at the top somewhere, like this, or something like that. I was wrong the whole time. The whole point of this is there'll be a snap up here that will go on the back, and when you want to pull it, put it on your luggage, you'll just unzip the bottom, put your luggage case through here, and undo the snap, obviously, and your luggage will be right there, and your, the rest of your luggage carrier will be right there. That's why I was looking at this upside down the whole time, and that's why they tell you, hey, do doorknob right up and down, and I did on the inside, so I can't see it anymore, hence doorknob. All right, so up. That makes more sense now. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, with right side up of trolley pocket, measure 10 inches from the top, fold at the pocket of the bottom, draw a line, trim off excess, yay. Top stitch on the right side at a quarter of an inch and two inches down from the folded edge. Give me this ruler. Thank you. That makes so much more sense now. And that quarter of an inch is right along this line, just above the... Yep. So I'm going to top stitch a quarter of an inch there, and then I'm going to stitch right along this chalk line, too. Let's go do that. I'm a doorknob, and I'm okay. That's all right. That's why I do a test bag with every pattern before I go making anything that I'm going to let out into the population. Start a little bit in, back stitch. And I stitched forward. I usually don't stitch the forward part. And I'm going to trim my threads, despite me having excess threads because of the upholstery fabric. It's okay, kitty. Mommy just kicked a can. It's all right. Yes, and you're a good girl. I bet you guys learned that my kitty is a good girl, didn't you? Sorry, got to baby talk to the cat sometimes. It's just the way the world works. Up to the prep table, please. There we go. Okay, so we stopped it. So we top stitched right along the top, and we also stitched right uh, two inches down. And I see that I've lost all but one of you. I understand. It's been kind of a long day. So the next thing we do is we put the snap down one inch down from the folded edge and six inches in from the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my snap and by Wednesday I will have my snaps put in because or by Wednesday by Friday because tomorrow I'll go to the store and get my snap setting kit because I'm a doorknob and I didn't put get the right stuff. So. At least we all learned that I don't know what I'm doing, right? Isn't that the whole point? Yeah. All right. So now we know I'll have my snap set, my snap set all but this part. I won't have this one done, so we can do one together. But I'll have my snap snap. I can't say that. I'll have my snaps set on the other piece that I was trying to do earlier today. Those will be done. This one will be, we'll do this one online together and the other half of this piece will be done as well. So we'll get together then, and I will see you guys then. I know I'm a little bit early, but, and we started a little late, but dang, we're getting good progress on this. We're on putting the trolley pocket on. Then we have to put in a strap, the shoulder straps. And then the side piece, and then we're into Putting the whole bag together. 
We will probably end up um, doing a Monday, Wednesday, Friday next week as well, because I want to get this ready and I want to take this with me to the convention that, or the convention, the retreat uh, that starts the first week of May. So I want to have this done by the end of this month. So I hope you guys join me then. I will absolutely promise that we will get together and I will make sure that all of these, um, the sales are announced in the events pages. So keep an eye out on those. Okay, everybody. Thanks again for joining me today and I will see you in two days. Have a good night.